All right, so I've slowed this down to it was tr I tried to set 50 in my slicer to somehow it changed it back to 100. So I put it down 57. We're at uh, 250 and 70 on the bed temperature. Um, I don't care that it's going to take three hours. Because um, I'm printing at 57% of 100. So. Um, I probably could crank it up. I'm not going to. So this is the um, filament that I'm using. Put it upside down. So this is 230 to 250. And this is what I've been using. And I've, I've used... Uh, almost all the roll already so it's possible there's some moisture or something in it but Arizona is not real well known for its moisture though we did have snow recently we've been having different kind of weather but um, if I look at the humidity uh, I've got like a weather station thing it'll say like 24 or 34 percent which is what it usually shows I don't think it's accurate, but... So anyway, um... It looks like it should probably be successful in printing. Um... But, you know, who knows. I mean, the, uh... The first layer is there. Um... It's printing the walls, or whatever you want to call it, I guess. Um... I added more tape because I think that the bed is actually um, maybe not liking this other tape. So the 3M blue is better than the Dollar Tree, probably. So, but then I just thought, well, I'll just add some tape rather than screw around with the, uh, the Z. I hit the Z at 2.4, negative 2.4. Anyway, I'm going to figure this damn thing out because it's not completely screwed. I mean, like, if I can't figure this out, then I'm, I'm in trouble because there's, like, back in the day when these first came out, they were all, like, you know, homebrew. <laughs> and people were buying parts and putting them together looking like Erector sets. So, you know, and you built your own, you would had to figure out, you know... How to make it work you know this kind of reminds me of like uh, tattooing and learning how to get a good clean line <laughs> the right depth the right hand speed you know the right ink etc etc um, so after many 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 attempts um, it might be usable so, I, I guess, I didn't know, I mean, like, I'm handling everything, you know, I didn't realize the oil on my fingers was that serious of a deal, uh, but, you know, it probably is, and somebody commented and told me, oh, God, you're doing that. So, I'm making all kinds of, like, newbie mistakes, so, you know, but it's cool that I got you guys on here to tell me stuff that you know from your experience, because... I mean, 3D printing isn't something brand new, and so a lot of you guys have been doing it for a long time. And I just started doing it last month. Or, actually, this month. Yeah, like, um, I'll have to go through my messages and see when Coastin gave me the uh, printer. Oh, I'd say probably two weeks ago, maybe. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, he gave me the, the printer with the belt that was broken and stuff, and and then the other one to use and stuff, so, um, and just kind of showed me real quick, you know, how to print a guitar tuner, uh, string winder, and, and I was off and running, I was printing, you know, and I did pretty good right away with the, the CR-10 clone, I mean, like, you know, but he'd already kind of set it up, you know, and had tape on the bed, and, you know, he'd already got past the point of learning that the glass bed really didn't work all that great. So, 
But this thing here kind of threw me a curveball because uh, when I first printed on it, I thought the print bed was absolutely amazing. But I think that the print bed went bad really fast. I think that's what happened. But um, tomorrow um, I do have a, uh, I guess it's like a ComGrow, a double-sided one with the magnetic stuff. Uh, it was like $15. I ordered that. I already shared that on the channel. I ordered that. Um, the springs and knobs are coming. I'm not going to put it on here. I've got it pretty level with the, um, the guy uh, um, posted the spacers um, on uh, the Prusa website printables. So specifically for this, if you go on Prusa's website, there are um, spacers. And those are those ones I printed. And I had to try quite a few times before I got it close to pretty even, you know. So um, th that's a good idea with this printer, I think, is to do that. Because even if you... Um, you know, let's say you drilled these things out and put the little spinners on the bottom. You'd still don't have a real easy way to put this into any kind of manual mode where you can do your paper. So, like, you'd basically need to do the auto bed leveling and, and see where it's at each time. So that takes, like, 10, 20 minutes. It's pretty slow. So that's the most frustrating thing for me is like auto bed loving isn't real fast on here. And you know, if you keep screwing up and you got to keep changing stuff. I mean like uh, this one in the front, I, I, sh I shimmed it five or six different times and the same thing with the one over there. This one is up higher than the rest so I never touched it and then I did this one a couple times. And you know when you go one end and the other end changes and then the whole bed changes so... I've kind of got it, I think, where it's going to be okay. Um, so, I'm just going to walk away from this and go to bed. Come back in about three hours. I'm not going to turn up the speed because I want it to look nice. It's going to clip onto the side of the uh, thing here to manage this cable. So, I found that on the printable website, too. So, anyway, thanks you guys for watching my stuff and bearing with me on my printer adventures, and thanks for all the comments and support.